Hey y'all, it's Diane with Shawcraft One and my old barn door. And I thought I would just do a quick process video for you on these altered playing cards that I made. And I got these at the Dollar Tree. We were at R. And so I just started playing around with them. And this is what I came up with. So I'm just going to show each one to you. I don't know if it's going to focus because I have stuff behind. But they're really cool to use these as you can you can put coffee dyed paper on the back and use them for journaling cards or you can use them as pockets. You can use them as um, you know, just tucks and things like that in your journals or whatever you decide to use them for. Um but I just thought they turned out really cute and I was excited to share them with you and I thought, well, why don't I just do a quick process video and show you how I did them. Now, I know there's probably a, a million and one process videos on YouTube on how to do altered playing cards, but I thought I'd share it with you while I'm doing it. So, those are those. And give me just a second, I'm going to clear this off and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, this is um, gesso and it's just in a, it's in a mint garlic jar, but it's homemade gesso and I just did a video um, showing you how to make this. So if you want to see that, you can find it on my channel. Um, but we're just going to take a little bit of gesso and apply it on both cards. And you don't need a lot. It doesn't take a whole lot. And I like it pretty thin because I like for the numbers and the clovers or whatever card you're using, I like it to still be able to show through. So I do a real thin coat. On each card. Now, you don't want to do too many cards at a time because then they're going to dry before you get your um, your stuff on them. So, just do maybe a couple cards at a time or whatever. Okay. So, now we have that. I have a little jar here. Put my gesso brush in so it doesn't dry out. Okay. And then, I'm going to take some decoupage paper. I found this decoupage paper at um, Hobby Lobby. Super cute. And I'll show you the package that it came in. This is what it looks like. And when I saw it, it got I got it on the clearance rack for $1.99. And when I saw it, this is what caught my attention with the flowers. Because they're super cute. So, I just take some of the decoupage paper and I just kind of rip it. And then just place it anywhere on the card that you want to put it. And I just kind of place it around. I just kind of rip the paper and then just place the decoupage paper around where you want it. Hang on, I gotta grab my mod dodge. This is my home. Oh sorry, I didn't mean to shake the camera. This is my homemade Mod Podge, um, and I say it's Mod Podge. It's basically half glue, half water, so that's what that is. So just take that, and then just go over the top of my paper with it. And then you can layer some more. And I think the gesso just basically, um, it helps the decoupage paper to hold better with the, onto the card. Because I did, I did some other ones and I just used the Mod Podge and uh, it didn't hold as well as I wanted it to. So I'm just going to add a little more Mod Podge or glue or whatever you want to call it and then we'll take some of the map piece and just rip it off 
And I usually just like to cover the whole card. Okay. And then I have some old pattern page paper. And I like to use it to, if I can find the end of it. So we're just going to rip a little bit of this. It's a little hard to do this on camera because I'm having to reach around the camera. Makes it a little awkward, but that's okay. Okay, and then I've got one spot in the middle there. What do I want to put there? Maybe a little more matte paper. This matte paper is really, really pretty. I don't know if you can see it, but the colors are, are very vibrant. So we'll put that right there in the middle. And you're just basically collaging on your card. And then on this one, I think I want big flower on this one. Like a lot of flower. So I'm going to tear around this flower. Y'all, I've had entirely too much coffee this morning. It's making me shaky. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so we're just going to add this over here on this card. Got a little dry down there. Let's put a little bit more Mod Podge down there. There is no rhyme or reason to this. You can do anything you want with this. You can put dictionary page. You can put a book page. You can, I mean, whatever you want to put. I just like to mix it up. And let's see. I think I want to put a little bit more of this. I don't want that much on the end. Just want to cover the edge of the card over here. And I always get really messy when I do this, but that's okay. That's the fun of crafting, right? Sorry, I think I bumped the camera with my head. And then I'm going to take a tiny piece of this and put it over here on this edge that didn't get completely covered. Now you're going to see that there are, you know, it's sticking over the edges. But what you're going to do is you're going to let these dry and then you'll come back and I usually use like a little emery board, just a fingernail file. And I just, here I have one, I just kind of go over the edge of the card like this and it gets all the extra paper off that you don't want. Okay, so I'm gonna use my heat tool and dry these real quick, and I'll be right back to show you the finished process. Okay, so now we have them dry, and I'll show you what I meant. It's still a little bit wet, but you know, I'm impatient. So basically, I just kinda go around the edge of the card like this, I mean, you can cut it if you want to, but to me, you know, left-handed people are not the best cutters. We don't do well with scissors just simply because they're not made for left-handed people. Most of them aren't anyway. So, I just kind of go around the edge with my emery board and just sand it off. So, I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing. I just kind of sh wanted to show you how I do it. So, I'll, uh, I'll get these done and I'll be right back. Okay, so instead of trying to get those done and coming right back, um, I went ahead and pulled some that I already have done. Let me see if I can find. Okay, so this is what you'll have after you do that. And then what I do is I take it over to my sewing machine and I sew around the edges. So, you wind up with a 
something like this. And you can see, I don't know if you can see real good, but you can see where I sewed around. The, I sewed with a light pink um, stitching or a light pink thread. So, but I just like the added element that it gives you when you have the light pink or when you have the, the sewing around the edges. And it also helps to keep it from lifting up. See, like on this, it lifted up a little bit on me, so I'll glue that down. Matter of fact, let's just do that right now. This is my favorite glue ever. And you just go right in there, glue that down like that, and you're good to go. Okay, so then the next step is I take, and I've already done the next step on these, but I take, you know, my ink, and I used Ground Espresso. I don't know if you can tell because it's kind of, I sit my ink dauber on top of it, so it kind of rubs off on it, but Ground exp uh, ground Espresso. And I just take this and go around the edge. So, just like that, super easy. And the next step is I take whatever stamps that I want to use, whatever theme that I want to use, and I just do some random stamping on my cards. So I've got a couple that I've already done, so we'll go to those. And I try to do this kind of in a step-by-step -step process so that this video doesn't take forever. But you can see where I did this stamping, and then I did just some random stamping around the edges. I did some stamping on this one and then some random stamping around the edges. So that's the next step. You'll just do the stamping. And then I pull out all of my trinkets and my decorations and all sorts of fun stuff. So let me grab a couple of things and I'll be right back. Okay, now I have bunches of stuff. Um, this is just a little um, basket that I just kinda throw in my off cuts and you know my little tiny bits things like that when I'm crafting I throw them in here just to see if maybe I might could use them somewhere else you know so I mean they're just little tiny bits some of them are some of them are bigger um, but like I say I just you know chunk them in this little um, basket and I actually have two of these little baskets so um, oh sorry uh, but anyways so I just chunk them in here for specifically little projects like this. So <clears throat> I went through and pulled out a few things that I thought might would go with these. And so now I just play. And I like this crochet trim. So I think what I would like to do is put that down the side there. Find my scissors. And I'm just going to trim it off. And put that back in my little basket. <coughs> Excuse me. So I just kind of play around and line things up. I have this little um, tub of buttons. Let's see what we can find in here. That might look pretty on there. I don't want it gold, gold, but that one I like. Maybe. I don't know. Do we want to do a color button? Ooh, I kind of like that one a little better than the gold. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. It just gives it a more muted look. So maybe we'll use that one. So basically what you do is you just kind of play. You just play around with it. See what you like. Um, you know, see what goes with... I don't like that. With the particular card that you have. Um... That one's way too big. I kind of like maybe a little bit of this. Cheesecloth. That's the name of it. It's cheesecloth. I think I'm going to cut it at an angle. And just kind of have a little bit of it poking out. Like so. Maybe. And then... I might take a little bit of this. This is just hemp, leftover hemp cord from sewing journals together. Oops. 
and we'll just run him through here maybe he don't want to go we'll go to this end I don't want a whole lot of that sticking out so oops so we'll just I think we'll trim him off right here and excuse my look I have glue and all over me from gluing that paper on there it sticks to your fingers okay so then we'll just tie him on Trying to not make this video really, really long, guys. Okay. I think I want them shorter. So we'll just trim those there. And then I have... Some, I want to add a little color. So I have some eyelash trim in a jar. You guys, I am... I use jars for everything, so... <laughs> it helps. So... Trim us a little bit of eyelash trim. Roll it around. And put it under the button. That's not super neat, but I like it. Okay, I think I like that. So, let me just back up here for a second. And you can use regular glue, you can use tacky glue. This is um, Aline's tacky glue, uh, but for uh, fabric type stuff, I like to use hot glue. So I'm just gonna run a little bit of hot glue down through there. Throw on my cheesecloth wherever it may land because you know there's no specific art to this at all. And then just press that down in there. I like mine to look a little sloppy. I don't like it to be perfect. I'm not a perfect type person. So, and I think I want to put a little dab of glue on the edges of this, too, to kind of hold it down a little bit. Sorry, I hope I'm in frame. My glue's getting little glue slivers everywhere. Strings. Okay. So, we'll just glue that down. Glue strings. <clears throat> okay. And then, where did my eyelash trim go? We're going to wind our eyelash. I think I'm going to wind it from this end because I want the pink to be showing more. So we'll wind our eyelash trim up. And what I usually do is just kind of fluff it out a little bit. I'm going to sit it on the spot where I want the button. Then I'm going to take my button Put a little glue on the back. And then pop it right on top of that eyelash trim. And there you have it. Simple, easy, it doesn't take long to do them. You know, and they're super cute in journals. And we'll do one more. I'm gonna do this one. And I think I like this trim with it. Where'd I put my scissors? There they are. Okay. And I like having some of the, like the lace hanging off the edges just because, you know, it doesn't give that perfect look to it. So we'll do, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and glue this down here because I know I want that there. So we're going to do this trim. I'm probably going to need to go eat something soon because I've had like a whole pot of coffee this morning and it is making me shaky. Okay. So what else do I want on here? I kind of like this little piece right here, but I don't know if I want white on here. I wonder... How this would look. No. I don't know. What do you think about that? You know what? What the heck? We're going to go for it. We'll try it and see what it looks like. I mean, it's just a plain card. If, uh, you know, if it doesn't turn out, then we'll start over. Okay. So I'm going to put him right here.
And then, let's see. Do we want some bling on there? Maybe a little. I think I like that. Let's add that. See how shaky I am? That's terrible. I need to quit drinking so much coffee. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to run just a tiny bit of glue down through here. This is not going to take a whole lot for this bling trim. And we'll add him on there. And then... Do I like that? I'm trying to decide if I like that, but I think I might like it with a little bit of eyelash trim. Let's see. <laughs> Stop it, Grace. Sorry. My puppy barks every time something moves in the house. She's so protective. <laughs> okay, so we'll just wrap it around. That didn't wrap very good. <clears throat> this is how I craft y'all. I talk to myself. <laughs> it's how I get the ideas out of my brain. But that's okay. Whatever works. Alright. I think I want this to be a little tighter. And then we're just going to pop that right on top. What do you think? I think that one's cute. I think it's really cute. I was going to put a key on it. I have some tiny keys in here. But I don't think I'm going to need it. Let me see. Oh, maybe. I think that would look cute. What do you think? I think it would look good. Let's see. I might can. Let's see if we can run this through this key. It's a tiny little opening. Oop, it's going to work. Okay. So, we can wrap it. Actually, I want to pull it a little closer to the end. <clears throat> because I want it to tie in the front. Let's see. Okay. We're going to go a little further, and I'm going to go ahead and tie it, and then I'll position the key where I want it. And see, this is really simple. It's really easy. You can pull it. This It's so fun playing with these because you get to be really creative and kind of let those creative juices flow. And I think I'm going to trim that a little. Okay. Maybe I don't like the tie in the front. Maybe we're going to scoot the tie around to the back. Or even to the side. Let's see. And I don't want it to be perfectly straight. So maybe we'll bring it down a little bit. And scoot the key over a little. Maybe I need this cut shorter. There. Just like that. What do you think? I like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I love those little key keys. I think they're super cute. And it just adds another little dimension. So you've got the sewing. You've got the stamping. I mean, there are... The possibilities are endless. So anyway, um, that is... It's a very simple process. And you get to play and have fun and you turn out with some really really cute cute see there's one I love that one super cute altered playing cards and you can I can sit and play for days with these but and like I say you can put um, coffee dyed paper on there on the back see I like the way this one turned out I like how I with the multi wraps on the, the hemp cord on that one so anyways that is my altered playing card
process. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box below. Let me know what you think about these. If you have any ideas that I can use, give those to me as well. Go ahead and like the video. If you have not yet subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.